what is one of the results of consuming foods of high sugar, excess added sugar, junk foods, confection, starches, things that contribute directly to an excess amount of sugar in our blood vessels. High sugar in the blood is a hyperglycemic state. Break it down. Hyper means super, and when we see glyc in biology, that means sugar. Hyper, glyc, super, sugar. So next time you catch yourself about to eat one of your favorite sugary snacks, my personal favorite are those fudge brownies, the two bite joints. If you catch me eating those, I'm gonna say leave me alone. I'm studying my super sugar state. Now, are we concerned about one meal or one sugary snack? No. True hyperglycemia is exemplified through duration. So we're really talking about this chronically high blood sugar. We hear all the time that junk food is bad for us or fast food is bad for us. And it goes something like, X food is bad because it causes Z. But there's an important component that we're not getting at, and that is the question of how. We don't really know what's going on inside here, and I believe understanding what's going on inside here is going to translate to better decisions out there. I want to present to you a side of sugar that doesn't get too much press. Some of us know it, some of us don't, but none of us have seen it in this light. Here we go. This video is brought to you by my partners at Element. Welcome to No Lab Code Required. My name is Johnny Cole Dixon. Okay, hyperglycemia. So we can take this in a lot of directions. Hear me out here because uh, hyperglycemia, we know this as a generally destructive state. So we can talk about a lot of different things. We can talk about insulin resistance. We can talk about diabetes. We can talk about um, obesity, but I want us to focus on just one mechanism. We're gonna focus on one singular result of having excess sugar in the blood, and it's going to contribute to how we develop the most popular and one of the most threatening diseases of our time, and that is cardiovascular disease or atherosclerosis. We're taking this route because it's not talked about all that often. And two, what we're gonna get into in terms of the pathway and the mechanism, it's just extremely fascinating to me. So it's gonna be a good one. First up, let's talk about the channel sponsor Element. Okay, so one thing about me is that I was a runner for eight years and it could have been 10, but my career was cut short for something that I don't talk about too often. You see, track and field was my sport. The 800 meters, two laps around the track, it was my bread and butter and outside of very hilarious moments with my teammates. I, I took the sport very seriously. I loved it like a brother. It challenged me, it pushed me, and I trained really hard, but that's actually the problem. I trained very hard, but I didn't have a nutrition plan and I didn't have a sleep plan. And at the time, I just didn't know that that mattered. My eating and sleep habits were bad and they actually got even worse when I started running in college where the competition usually creeps up. I faced a lot of adversity, but a lot of it was self-inflicted. I would get these leg stopping cramps in the back of my leg while I was training and I would have to sit out. I remember watching my teammates train get faster and get better while I sat there dealing with these cramps and being keenly frustrated. Anyways, I ended up leaving track and the, the cramps didn't go away. In fact, they continued on and I just got used to it to the point where I was like, I guess this is just a part of life. I even stopped looking for a solution. What I've come to learn is that I was moving way too much to not be adding electrolytes. You see, electrolytes are the key to how we move. They are the underlying hard workers to how our nervous system gets things done. If we stripped our body totally clear of electrolytes, we'd literally be incapable of moving because they create the action potential that our nervous system uses to control our muscles. And those of us that move more, use more. So when we don't have an adequate amount of these things in our body, we tend to experience these complications. And I wish I would have known of Element back when I was training as an athlete because it was night and day. The moment I started adding these these electrolytes, uh, the cramps were gone, right? And I was, it was very evident that the component I was missing was proper hydration. And not to mention, proper hydration isn't just about necessarily getting ourselves uh, primed up to move our muscles. The most important part of our nervous system is right upstairs. It's the brain and the brain is running off of the same goods that the rest of our body is running off of. What's dope about Element is that you just get the electrolytes, no sugar, just sodium, potassium, and magnesium in a box. It's ridiculously convenient. And when you use the custom link below, rather you're new or returning, you actually get a free sample pack with a mix of different flavors to choose from. It's a sweet deal to get a little extra. Thank you Element for being a channel sponsor. All right, I made a video on seed 
Seed Oil, and in that video, we highlighted an evident character that's playing the villain behind atherosclerosis, and its name is Ox LDL. Now, we got really familiar with Ox LDL in that video. If you haven't checked it out, that's fine. I'm gonna make sure you get everything you need for this video to stand alone, but if you gotta fill any gaps, you can always refer back to that video. And I'm gonna refresh us on what Ox LDL is, but if we look at the simplified pathology of atherosclerosis, we can see that Ox LDL is crucial to the development of it. It's not some kind of niche particle in the body. This little booger is the main character behind our biggest biological threat. Now, what's really important here? It's the fact that we started off with totally normal and healthy LDL, but something came and interacted with it, influenced it, and it changed from regular healthy LDL, and it ends up becoming its unhealthy alter ego, Ox LDL. And we'll talk more about what LDL is in a bit as well, but we see that Ox LDL doesn't just magically happen. There's something that's interacting that's forcing this out. So the question is, what the heck is transforming regular old healthy LDL into Ox LDL? What's driving it? Here's a hint. No matter who you are, where you from, who your mommy and daddy is, cardiovascular disease is relevant and should be on your list of things to actively prevent yourself from encountering. It's a result of our blood vessels occluding or narrowing due to plaque buildup. This plaque buildup is known as thrombosis. Now we've looked into thrombosis and um, plaque buildup and it's a very fat centric disease. I mean there's literal fatty deposits being deposited in those blood vessels, right? So naturally we're just like, hey, we better back up off of eating all of this fat. And that's when you get the low fat craze that swept America. Sweeping America. <laughs> We're being swept as we speak. And you know, you may go into the grocery store and you're going to see these low fat products on so many shelves. However, we've learned and uncovered some things and now the scientific community is collectively pointing at the real ingredient that's been bullying our blood vessels this whole time. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein, but its name does not matter nearly as much as its function. Understand it as a little device the body uses to move fat around in the blood. The reason we have LDL is because we understand that fat and water don't mix. So we can't just have fat as is in our super watery blood. So we encase it in a little vehicle, that way it can get around. LDL is just like a little taxi or Uber for fat. Its literal job is to drive it around to where where it's needed and drop it off. Now, this little tiny vehicle is not a military tank. It isn't bolstered and fortified. It's more like a Honda Civic, one of the most stolen cars of all time. LDL is vulnerable, it's delicate, it's easily attacked by what we call free radicals. Free radicals are tiny, unstable, highly reactive thieves. These little molecules are straight up bandits, and if you can get enough of them to gang up on LDL, they're going to steal something. They steal functionality. Free radicals, they find LDL, they rob it of its functionality, and in physiology, we name things based on its function. So now that the function of LDL is officially robbed, we gotta change the name. Goodbye LDL, hello, Ox LDO. Now, wait till you see what Sugar's sneaky role is in this, and we're gonna get there, but to understand it, we have to get a clue on these adjacent details. It turns out the reason that Ox LDL is so nasty for us is because it turns our vasculature, our blood vessels, into a war zone. The immune system activates causing inflammation. Platelets are activated. Platelets are sticky cells that bind together to plug up holes when we're bleeding. We're not bleeding here, so they're being summoned inappropriately. Thirdly, the layer of our vessels that encases our blood, it loses its integrity. Left unchecked, OxLDL is inviting atherosclerosis, and it's not going to be too long before it rolls up, steps out his car, walks up your driveway, and it ain't politely knocking on your door. Why am I personifying chronic disease? Perhaps the most unfortunate effect of OxLDL is that when it's in the blood, the immune system sends a macrophage after it. What the heck is a macrophage? A macrophage is a special soldier in the immune system's army. And the macrophage's weapon of choice is eating. That's right. When a macrophage is sent after an intruder, it engulfs it and swallows it whole, just like Pac-Man. Now, normally when it eats something, it's just going to spit it back out in benign byproducts. But it isn't able to do that with OxLDL because OxLDL is just that dysfunctional. But the macrophage just ingests more and more and more and it bloats up and becomes this swollen, fat-laden glob that just loses its function. And of course, now that the function is gone, we gotta rename it. Goodbye, macrophage, hello, 
foam cell. These foam cells congregate around that compromised blood vessel area. This goes on for some time and we are cooking up the recipe for cardiovascular disease. Back as a kid, coming up on the south suburbs of Chicago, I mean, we just put sugar on stuff and call it a snack, sugar bread. And look, if there ain't enough Kool-Aid in the house to make a Kool-Aid, I'm making sugar water to wash it down. Just unhinged use of sugar back then. And contrast that, we aren't really getting in trouble because of the sugar that we add when we're cooking. It's really in everything else that we eat. Later on, we'll discuss some of the biggest culprits loading up sugar in our body and what we can do about it. Okay, I'm so excited to talk about this part. This is the reason you're here. Here's what you need to know about what's going on inside you right now. It ain't magic. Every single outcome in the body is traceable. Now, we may not have every single uh, answer to how the body does every single thing, but we know that the body gets a lot of things done by way of receptors and pathways. It looks something like this. Receptor, pathway. Receptors activate pathways. Receptors are like padlocks. They don't unlock unless the right key is used. Once the right key is used on a receptor, it activates a pathway. Those free radicals we talked about earlier, the ones that transform LDL into OxLDL, the ones that uh, steal functionality, those don't just come out of nowhere. They're the result of an activated pathway. So the question is, what receptor is activating a pathway that makes free radicals? It's a receptor that's present on many of our cells and it's called RAGE. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that we have a name for every receptor and every pathway in the body, so it gets very messy. But all we have to focus on is this one single receptor and that is RAGE. Now, RAGE is a well-studied little booger, and if you wanna go in depth uh, on the more technical side of some of the things like the difference between free radicals and ROS, there are specific studies that look at that stuff. You can check my personal notes below. But really, all we need to know is that RAGE is a receptor, and when the right key is used, it's going to produce two outcomes. Outcome number one, inflammation. When you hear inflammation, think immune system at work. The easiest way I like to understand inflammation is that I think of it's five tenets, redness, swelling, heat, pain, and sometimes loss of function. If I got hit in the arm really, really hard, then all five of those tenets are gonna show up, and that's inflammation on this macro level, easily sensible. But we can imagine this if we zoom in on a micro level, the immune system responding to certain things in the body and working on specific items, right? So that is totally normal, but where we get in trouble is where inflammation is going on continuously, the immune system is working continuously. We're running into what we know as chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation, we're talking about building the house for in which our most popular conditions reside. Outcome number two, free radicals. We just talked about this. Free radicals are one of the results of unlocking rage. Free radicals are the driving force behind oxidation. Now, oxidation is really just this degradation or molecular breakdown of items in the body. And again, this is actually necessary. We need this, but there is a certain point at which it becomes too much. So if it's left unchecked, we can run into problems. And we're starting to see a theme here. Inflammation, oxidation, these two things are totally normal and necessary, but at one point when they are too much, we start to run into these issues and the body is always going to opt for balance more than I love collard greens and hot water cornbread, the body it loves balance and its attempt to fight for this balance is called homeostasis. So this receptor called RAGE is contributing to all of this nasty stuff, but we learned that it's a receptor, so it has to be unlocked. That leads us to the question of what specific key is unlocking RAGE? So there's a lot of items in our blood and one of the most notable is glucose. If you're unfamiliar with glucose, now's the time to get to know them because glucose is responsible for energy production. The body prefers glucose to generate energy to do basically everything. It's fuel, the body runs on glucose. Glucose is the simplest form of sugar. Ultimately, everything that we eat that isn't fat, protein, vitamins, minerals, or fiber is going to eventually be broken down and turned into glucose. The body loves this stuff, however, when we have a lot of glucose circulating in our blood, 
for periods of time, it can actually spontaneously combine with another particle and form what we call an advanced glycation end product or AGE. Check this out. So I had a very hard time figuring out what the heck are we going to use as an example to show how these AGEs are formed. And I remember these snap wristbands we used to play with as kids and it's actually the perfect tool to illustrate this reaction taking place. So it's a spontaneous reaction. So let's say this is a random protein in the blood and let's say this is a glucose molecule. It's spontaneous meaning that just like two cars can simply collide on the road, these can run into each other and cause an interaction. And this is gonna increase the chances of this happening if glucose is excessive. We have a high amount of blood sugar, this increases the chances of this taking place. So what actually happens when they collide? Well, this protein molecule, it's going to entangle with the glucose molecule and we have ourselves a molecular entanglement. We have ourselves an advanced glycated end product. Let's break it down. Advanced meaning there are preliminary steps to make this end product. Although my snap bands show it instantly, it actually takes place over time. Glycation, here's that word again. Glyc. Glyc refers to sugar. So glycation is referring to this ultimate form. Just like when the Power Rangers come together and transform into that big metal monster thingy. I didn't watch Power Rangers. End product refers to the terminal nature of an AGE because what I didn't mention yet is that they're actually irreversible. We end up with this molecularly caked sugary product and this is the specific key that unlocks RAGE. Which by the way, RAGE actually stands for receptor of advanced glycation end products. Don't freak out about how I mentioned that these AGEs are irreversible. We're more so talking about the molecular steps to make an AGE, they can't be undone. But the body actually isn't necessarily storing these AGEs, it can get rid of them. However, it's hard to keep up with that when we're in the state of hyperglycemia, that super sugary state. So what puts us in a constant sugary state? Well, I say we take a look at some of the worst offenders. First up, juice. Juice is liquid sugar water. It can be freshly squeezed, organic juice, does not matter. One of the most elusive intakes of sugar, especially here in America, is liquid sugar. A whole fruit comes with this fibrous components, and when we intake the fiber along with the fruit, then it's going to have a more positive impact on our blood sugar. Fiber gives the sugar that is naturally present in a fruit a brake pedal. When we juice fruit, we remove the fiber. No more fiber means no more brake pedal, and there's quite the radical difference that takes place on our blood sugar. Our vessels are about to get real sweet. Snacks with added sugar. Processed foods don't care about you at all. Our taste buds jump for sugar, and the higher they jump, the fatter the food industry's wallets. And you can always find how much sugar is added into these foods by checking the label. It's going to be right next to added sugar. Personally, I think anything over 0.0, .0 is too much. Not to mention that the number on the label is for one serving size. We got to keep that in mind. If you've ever had one serving of anything, I'd like to meet you. Bread. Okay, this one is controversial, but not really. We just don't like to admit it. Now, bread is a little sneaky. Obviously, it's not as sweet as a piece of candy. Bread is known as a starch, and starch is really just a funny word for eventually it's going to turn into sugar. Now, with all these things, of course, there is some nuance. And of course, we can actually talk about and discuss this nuance in another video because that's what I do if you're interested. But just like we could have figured, sugar is one of the top culprits behind the most popular disease in the world. I am a whole foods advocate. I believe there is great advantage to starting off preparing meals for yourself, preparing your food with starting with whole foods because for one, I control my own sugar intake. Specifically, I don't stray away from honey or agave. They just check every box for me. So I only use those two specifically, but I'm able to know exactly how much sugar I'm putting in my own meals. Not only that, when you start off with whole foods, they aren't stripped of their fiber because nobody got their little processing hands on it yet. So I'm checking two boxes. I'm cognizant of how much sugar I'm intaking and I'm naturally getting more fiber as a whole foods consumer. All right, I hope you guys gained some insight and some perspective from this video. I'm gonna get about y'all with.